Good morning, afternoon, evening, everybody. Now it's afternoon for Hillary. Hi, Hillary. Hi, Kay. Hi, Tommy. Who else is here? Kay and I rocking the presentation. Oh, yeah. Beth. Uh, hi, Chris. You spelled you spelled morning wrong. Board board giddy giddy. <laughs> morning ginnin. Board Morning ginnin. <laughs> Sounds Welsh. Oh, it's more, he wanted to say morning. He says. Oh. Hi, hi, Phyllis Paz. Picasio, Picasio, Picasio from Rhode Island. Picasio, that's pretty good. Picasio. Like and then we have June. Hi, June. <sighs> Rough night there, Chris. <laughs> What's the weather? Like? Um, Hillary says a bit dull in Wales today, but no dull? rain. Dull. It is bright and sunny outside, but the temperature is only going to go up to like plus three or four so only in the 30s but tomorrow mm -hmm. wednesday we're going to be rocking like 52 degrees wednesday yes that's too <laughs> it's 52 here now it's actually pretty chilly for for north florida <laughs> and we have hello sharon we have kirsten von molt Moltke. and then my mom who says it's chilly down in south florida hey joe <laughs> So, I hope everybody's doing well. Okay, oh, says that um, she heard her really central NY New York whiny accent <laughs> when she was listening to her own presentation. <laughs> I think we all do that. We'll listen to ourselves. And there's a spot when you're going through, you have to go through New York and Pennsylvania to get to South Carolina, and there's a spot where you go through Pennsylvania, and I want to say, it's in the mountains in the, the the particular accent in that specific place it's always where we stop to get lunch on the first day and the accents are so crazy in that just that little bubble of an area it's fun accents are fun what y'all talking about i ain't know nothing about no accents <laughs> Oh, Hillary found a missing child yesterday and a second. I want to say, did you return it to its mother? No. <laughs> a second cousin, once removed, has joined WikiTree. Oh, that's exciting. That is fun. So, oh, it's it's quilt day today, says Ooh. June. And she's working on a blog post for the Sun New Hampshire quilt and book. Do you know what? One year during our Sourceathon, Roberta Estes came on and did a, a informational about how to source a quilt. Like you get a quilt handed down from your ancestors. And she was showing that most quilts have a signature block and they would have written their name and their date or who it was a dedication block or something. And to look for that when you're looking at family quilts, not all of them, none of mine did, but I thought that was great. Happy quilt mm -hmm. day. Yeah, and happy. <clears throat> well, it's the first day of spring for all of us in the northern hemisphere, and it's the first day of fall for everyone in the southern hemisphere. Did I do that right? I think I did. <laughs> That's like trying to point in here. See, I think I'm pointing at you, and I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> no. Speaking no. of quilts, speaking of quilts, a, a particular person showed up in the question of the week. Oh, well, what is the question of the week, Megs? Well, you know, the question of the week is, do you have Irish roots? Now, this particular person says that he has about 3% Irish, but he also posted this, which is just completely opposite. Guess who that is? Pip! Yep. Check, out, <laughs> check out the legs on this one, all the way down. <laughs> He doesn't have a what's the little knife called that you usually put in your there was a there's a guy that used to work for um family tree dna and he always wore kilts and uh robert was always had his knife and they would stop him in airports and try and get the knife off of, off of him and he was like he's a, he was a giant so you couldn't get his knife from him but look at that Tim dresses up pretty nice doesn't he mm -hmm. yes yeah, so that that's a part of the question of the week, but the real question of the week, we'll go to it. 
Okay, the real question. And where is Pip? He's never here. No, 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 no. He missed his picture. <laughs> um, there were so many great questions or great answers about um, uh, if, if any of your family is Irish. And thankfully, not a whole ton of people answered that um, they were Irish um, in the comment section. The answer to this post button apparently is working. So I don't have three pages of, of just comments to go through. I actually have answers. <laughs> um, there were a couple of people like Mark Weinheimer and Kevin Conroy and Steve Thomas. Wait, no, Steve Thomas and Kevin Conroy, not, not Mark Weinheimer. But Kevin and March uh, and Steve were in the pub on March 17th. They don't care if they're Irish or not, but they're going to go celebrate it anyway. <laughs> I thought that was a great answer to the question. Um, lots of people were talking about having uh, Irish ancestors, like the Douglas name popped up a lot. A lot of people were saying that they were connected to the G Douglas family. And so Mark Weinheimer's, I have an Irish ancestor who was a brick wall. And that is uh, the wiki tree Douglas dash 10589. So if you're related to him, there's a couple of answers on there about uh, the Douglas family. Clark, Greg Clark. Greg's not here this morning, or is he coming? Greg, out? are you hiding in the background, Greg? He's a he's really a Douglas, so he's got Irish stuff going on. Um, one hundred percent Irish on her father's side, on her mother's side, she's zero percent. Does that mean she gets a half kiss on St. Patrick's Day? <laughs> uh, in our family, we don't wear green, like my family, the O'Doherty family that I am a part of right here. We don't wear green on St. Patrick's Day because we're Irish. So people see us and they say, where's your green? And it's right here in my blood, man, right here. <clears throat> uh, people were talking about- Pip is here. Did you see the picture, Pip? If you didn't, I'll throw it back up. I have it. Do I? There you go. That's the man that just entered the room. <laughs> Ah, so uh, Scots Irish. There was lots of Scotch Irish talk, um, and there. I have a couple of links that Sarah's going to throw up. The first one is the Irish DNA Atlas Project, um, and Sarah's mm -hmm. got that link to throw up. The Just Irish write it down real quick, guys. Yeah, it's basically it's suffering all of Mindy. Or Google, Google the Irish DNA mm -hmm. Atlas. That would, yeah, that would probably be better. And yeah. that project talked about um, whether or not how much there was Scots and Irish. It looked at, at different patterns. The key findings were mass movement of in recent decades, uh, that there are numerous distinct uh, genetic clusters. So this is a, obviously it's a genetic study. Um, but there's there's lots of different types of Irish people that have lots of Scottish influence and there's lots of Scot Scottish people who have Irish influence. And I'm going to show you a second link or no, this is a picture. And this is from and that's the second link there for you, Sarah. This is from a study that was released and these two studies have just been released. So they're very new. This one was in September. This is from uh, people who have a uh, Scandinavian background. Um, I was using this to show how the Scandinavians came into Northern Ireland, Northern Scotland, Northern Ireland and Ireland, and how in this mitochondrial grouping of people who came over, there's lots of Scandinavian in the Irish. And I didn't see a lot of commentary on that, which my mother's 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 line is Scandinavian but they all came from Ireland. And of course, then there was some sort of Viking, something that went on, but this is a really cool story, uh, report two, and it actually shows the specific areas. So this is my people, all the people that went to Appalachia, that's me. Um, there's groups of people that went specifically to Pennsylvania in the Midwest, to Virginia and the and lowland, south, uh, um, lowland South. So like the low country of South Carolina, Charleston in that area, whereas the up country and the Appalachians got uh, the people from Northern Ireland. I guess they wanted to go and live in the places that look geographically like what they were living in. So those are two interesting projects that you can look at to get some information and answers about how Irish or Scottish you really are. 
had a great comment here about uh, a Clada band. Um, my great grandmother, Jane Walker, was born in Galway. Uh, when she was a teenager, she and her sister were able to leave during the potato famine. They lived in New Orleans, uh, and that's where she met Alexander McCullough, who was working as a shipwright. They had five children, moved to Pennsylvania to care for aging, his aging parents. Jane took a trip back to New Orleans to visit her sister, and she developed yellow fever. She died. Oh, it's a horrible, horrible story. Yet she has a clatter ring that she bought in Galway to honor her. The hands represent friendship, and the heart represents love. The crown represents loyalty. Um, I actually, my wedding ring, and you can't see it; it's too, too far away. Is a clatter ring because I'm Irish and my spouse is Irish, and if the if the heart is pointing out on your hand, then that means that you are available, that you are, that you can be dated. And if the heart is pointing towards your heart, that means that your heart is taken. So uh, my spouse and I wear our, our bands pointing towards our house, hearts. We also got our wedding rings from Galway, Ireland. Ooh. Wow. I thought that was a great coincidence. Very cool. Um, so that's a great, great one. Lots of people were talking about um, Belfast. Um, there were four children born in Uganda, raised in an English private boarding school whilst her siblings remained in England. Anyway, the whole crux of the story is that this kid, because money was tight, ended up in, a, in an Irish boarding school rather than an English boarding school and ended up marrying this guy. The, the, the marriage eventually broke up, but that's why she's part Irish and she's kind of glad that things went astray and she met this guy in Ireland. So now T Dowding has some, some Irish to, to claim. Um, anyway, there's lots of great stories, lots of great things. And of course, uh, that wonderful picture that I had of <laughs> our favorite plot. Your favorite man in a kilt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I wanted to say one more thing that Everybody who's on Ancestry DNA recently had all of their DNA results updated for their origins, updated to show that a lot of people had way more Scottish in them than they thought. But that's because people from Scotland or people with Scottish heritage or report Scottish heritage had added themselves to DNA Ancestry's pool. So you were showing up more matches to Scottish, not necessarily that you have maybe if you, you looked at the DNA pool at another, another company, you'll show up more Irish than Scottish. So make sure you, you check all the sources and not just one when you're looking at your origin report. Char Charles was saying um, something. He says he, have a, he has a French surname and about 400 years of known French ancestors. However, I have a R1, B1, B2, A1, A2F which was in the 1950s, predominantly 80% Scott and 75% Irishman born within that decade. Yeah, and my, my DNA, I have a, a, an interesting story. We have this family of um, Templetons who, are, um, who claim Scottish um, heritage, who even chartered a Scottish, uh, um, what do you call it, clan back in the day and they even had this beautiful tartan made up that's right here in the background but having the dna test done on some some templetons in my family we're irish <laughs> we're so irish we're not scots yet um i did a presentation on dna and surname projects back a, a little while ago on legacy family tree and the North of Ireland project reached out to me and they said, we think we know where your Templetons are from. And sure enough, our Templetons, we have absolutely identified that they're from um, Island McGee, north of Belfast. Um, and they're in a very Scots Irish area. So my Templetons probably did go back and forth between Ireland and Scotland, but they're, we're O'Neill's. We're O'Neill's. Mindy, do you have any Irish in you or no? I do. I have one little tiny branch and it's one of my, I actually did answer the question of the week. It's one of my biggest brick walls mm -hmm. because I can't get past the, um, the one that migrated, but she was sent over by herself, by her parents, um, as a teenager to marry during the potato famines, she was sent. Um, so there's, and she has a really common name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I think I found one distant ancestor who's 
from like it says he's born in Ireland, but I haven't confirmed, so I don't really consider myself Irish at all. But there's a possibility, especially like since kind of England and Ireland are kind of all clumped together there, so it's it's likely. No Cuban. No. <laughs> Oh, Mags. <laughs> so, speaking of Irish, our profiles of the week are Irish. <laughs> Which Irish notable are you most closely connected to? So, we had, <clears throat> obviously, we started off with our, you know, the main, the main man, St. Patrick himself. Which, if you guys know the story... Why are there no snakes in Ireland? It's because of St. Patrick. He, you know, got, he drove all the snakes into the sea. <laughs> so uh, that's St. Patrick, our main man. Ap Calpurnius is his last name of birth. <laughs> St. Patrick. And if you, if anybody wants to put who they're most closely connected to in the chat, please do so. And then we actually have a little in the, it's a very well-written biography. Look how beautiful it is with the pictures in there. And then there's a little, why are there no snakes in Ireland section? <laughs> and I don't know what that means. I don't know. If anybody can share any insight, that'd be great. Love. And the next, our next guys, probably a lot of people are also familiar with because of this, probably what they drank on St. Patrick's day. <laughs> Arthur Guinness born in Ireland in 1725. And he was a brewer, you know, the Guinness um, beer. And yeah. Do you guys like, I don't think I've ever had a Guinness beer. You, I'm sure Mags has, you know. She I've, had, I've had a Guinness in Dublin. Ooh. It was good. But I didn't have a, a, a dark Guinness. I had a light Guinness. Like, it, it's not what you normally see when you see a Guinness. So, because I'm not a dark beer person. That is our... Then, then next we have Maureen O'Hare, born in 1920 in Ireland, an actress, best known, well, I guess one of her the original Parent Trap movie. Good friends with John Wayne. And that movie she was in on John, with John Wayne was on on mm -hmm. on St. Patrick's Day. Mm -hmm. And she also worked with the director John Ford. She was also a singer and a famous redhead who was known for playing passionate and sensible heroines. The uh, words. To... Go sorry. ahead, Mags. The words that you wanted to know the uh, the definition of from mm -hmm. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Oh, really? That's what it says? Yes. Oh, darn. You would have was, thought that. I was just going to say, I'm 20 degrees from Maureen O'Hara, but also George Bernard Shaw. So I had two this week. Oh, no. No, what? I don't know. I, I guess I was reading <laughs> Charles. He says he has the redheaded gene and it affects his pain receptors. Okay. Yeah. That's all. The next one on our list is Michael Collins. Oh, I didn't. Hold on. I'm trying to. I have too many screens going on here. Born in 1890 in Ireland. I guess they're all. I can just stop saying Ireland because I guess they are all born in Ireland. He died at the age of 31, though. <clears throat> didn't have any. Didn't get married or have any kids but he was um he was killed in during the irish civil war in 1922 he was an irish revolutionary leader and yeah died in during the war oh we got a, we got a lot of stuff on his bio 
Yeah, you know, there's a lot of stuff about about him. So please, I always recommend everybody reading the the profiles of the week. You always learn something. If you had any any people who were involved in the Irish Revolution, like Bloody Sunday and all that stuff, you should uh, write that up on their profiles. We have we have a couple in our Doherty fan family who were involved. This is. If anybody wants to take on reading this biography. <laughs> okay. So that is Michael Collins. Next, we have George Bernard Shaw, Irish playwright and co founder of the London School of Economics. Born in Ireland. <laughs> I wouldn't have guessed. Would you? Would you think that? Hmm. He, so he was the first. He was the only person to have been awarded a Nobel Prize in Literature and an Oscar until Bob Dylan also received both, but he was the first one to receive the Nobel Prize in Literature, which was in 1925 and an Oscar in 1938 for his no, contributions. Wasn't yeah. Bob Dylan's Nobel Prize though a laureate for poet poetry? It was poet laureate, not a not for literature. I no? just I'm just checking. Oh, if you want, I don't, I'm not sure. I just, I could just have some notes here. I'm not, is. I'm gonna look it up. Somebody look, look it up. Okay, so maybe Mags will see what that is, but his, his Nobel Prize and Oscar was his work for the film Pygamillion. I can't even say that. So I'm gonna try. Pygmalion, yeah, and he no, died at the age of ninety. Huh? It's it's he won it for literature by creating a po new poetic expressions within the American song tradition. Okay, there you go. It's poetry, but it's for literature. That's interesting. Hmm, that is interesting. Okay, so and then next we have Constance Gore Booth. Irish politician, revolutionary nationalist, suffragette, and socialist. She was born in England, but probably, <laughs> probably her parents um, were in Ireland, yeah. So she was in 1918, she was the first woman elected to the British House of Commons and formed the first like, Dal Irian. I can't even say that, this, this word. Right here, Dal Ir Irian. Is that how you would pronounce it? Looks good to me. <laughs> and she was also one of the first women in the world to hold a cabinet position for the Minister for Labor of the Irish Republic. So very, we got a lot of women on here too. We have three, we have another one. You coming up on mine? Great. On your, on yours. Is this Grace O'Malley? Yes. Grace O'Malley. Do you want to tell us about Grace O'Malley then? Maybe? She, she was an Irish chieftain. She was actually the chief of an Irish tribe of the, um of the O'Malley clan, west of Ireland. Uh, she fathered in the footsteps of, she followed in the footsteps of her, her father. Uh, she was um, the queen of Connacht. The sea queen, the sea queen of Connacht. Yeah. Well, yes, and she was a well-known historical figure. Um, so she was pretty cool. What she's famous for here is there's a, a bunch of restaurants and bars called Grace O'Malley's and the original one was located across from the House of Parliament and a famous parliamentarian was shot dead in front of the steps of this bar. So this bar, Grace O'Malley's, will never be shut down because it's almost like a holy place to go to in Ottawa. So there you go, Grace O'Malley. Yes. And I'm related to her. Yeah, she was, and she was uh, buried at sea. She engaged in piracy and multiple rebellions against the English overlords of Ireland. Oh, she's just wonderful. <laughs> Mags, Mags loves this lady. Rebel. She's a rebel pirate lady. <laughs> Erg. Erg. Okay, then we have two more. Oscar Wilde, probably 
most people are familiar with Oscar Wilde, the author, wrote uh, The Picture of Dorian Gray, born in Ireland, died in France. <laughs> and also he wrote The Importance of Being Earnest. He was author, playwright, poet, and yeah, that, that's, that's him. Have you guys read the book? Yes. Both the books. Dorian Gray one I have as well. And he wrote plays as well, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, playwright. Mm hmm So produced society comedies in the early 1890s. Ladies, Windmere's fan, a woman of no importance, and an ideal husband. Um, his only novel was The Picture of Dorian Gray. That was his only novel. I love the, the final quote at the bottom. The only difference between the saint and the sinner is that every saint has a past, and every sinner has a future. Very cool. So that, we have one more. Daniel O'Connell. So out of all of them, only one was not born in Ireland. So he was born in 1775. He was referred to as a liberator or the emancipator and was an Irish political leader in the first half of the 19th century. He campaigned for Catholic emancipation, including the right for Catholics to sit in the Westminster Parliament. And he died in Italy. Why, why was he there? That's it's what I want to know. Was he just on a trip? Was he doing some political stuff over in Italy? I don't know. Oh, so he had four sons and three daughters, and all of his sons were members of parliament. Fun fact. That's pretty cool. Um, I was trying to see why he went over to Italy. If anybody knows that, please tell me. And then we can move on. So those are all of our Irish notables, our profiles of the week. How very cool. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. So let's see who I'm most clicked closely connected to. It's probably the same as Mags and Mindy usually is. Because we're kinda of, we're kind of the same. Uh, let's see. Uh, Maureen? Yeah. Well also I'm the kind of the same. Maureen, George, and O'Malley. Yep. Let's see how I'm connected to Maureen though. Oh through my dad. Oh, actually, through my dad's callous side. That never happens. Oh, my gosh. That never happens. It's always through my grandma's side. Never through. That's exciting. I always love seeing how I'm connected. I've been trying to make a point. I think it's really good practice for everybody to see your connections and go through and kind of verify at least your trail that is first connected, making sure all of those connections are valid. I've been trying to do that with the time I have, at least for my closest one, I try to do that. So making sure that this is actually the father and the brother and, you know, making sure they're all accurate. Cause sometimes there might be an uncertain connection and that's why. So if anybody, that's a good practice. I like to do that. <laughs> my mom says he was in Italy because Italy is cool. <laughs> Good answer. Yes. So next we're going to go on. Oh my gosh, your mother needs to stop. <laughs> she it, says, she mom says wait, wait, I gotta tell you, I've gotta read what Sarah's mom just wrote. <laughs> but we're she not said, actually DNA related. Wait, 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 wait. See, Sarah, that's why you are so beautiful. <laughs> just look at Maureen O'Hara. <laughs> really? <laughs> Sarah's head. Oh. <laughs> okay. Stop it, Joe. I know, now I'm all red. <laughs> okay, now to the photos of the week. Springtime is our theme. I know that um, Yoke, who was on last week, I don't think she's here this time, but she, her photo last week was chosen as photo of the week. Pretty yes, cool. it was. Yeah. It was a pretty photo, too. Mm -hmm. So let's look at these springtime photos. So we have the wedding of Ida Larner and John Evans. Probably happened in the springtime. Yep. 
April 22nd, 1946. Yeah, I think that was the one that mentioned that it was during the war, so they didn't have the traditional bridal gown material. Oh, I guess that's in the G2G post where they wrote that, or somebody that. So we have Charles Vigneron. I have no idea how to pronounce your name. Vigneron wants to know if. Um, we could have an unsupported gateway ancestors challenge or something where people try and connect gateway ancestors across the pond, hmm. either pond. Cause could this be a topic? So unsupported gateway ancestors, yeah. which gateway, what kind of topic now? The gateway hold. ancestor is somebody who's come to the United States mm. or to a country. They've entered a country and they're the first known ancestor in the country, whether it's Australia or, or New Zealand or the United States, but they can't get back any further past their mm. entry ancestor, that gateway ancestor. Okay. Cause I'm familiar with that term. Cause I know some projects use it. Um, yep. So I'll just, so you, what kind of topic, like for our live cast for Gateway Ancestors or? Or a challenge so challenge. people will clean up the lines. That might be. Yeah. Hmm. Brick, I guess kind of, it's kind of like a brick wall challenge, but a brick wall Gateway Ancestor challenge. <laughs> Yoki you missed Yoki your is here. picture of the week is, is the, your picture from last week is the picture of the week. Mm -hmm. This Ooh. week, yeah. And she got confused apparently because of the daylight saving times for us, but it hasn't happened for her yet. So she got confused with the times. Oh, time zones and daylight savings time. <laughs> I don't. Chris says that he thought gateway ancestors were people who were connected to surety barons. That may have been the 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 specific thing years and years and years ago. But I don't. I think the gateway ancestors are literally whoever the, the person was that made entry to the country. So I don't think it's just for the surety baron. Well, look it up real quick. I know because yeah, it's a very popular yeah. thing on the Mayflower. Gateway ancestors of per At least this is the definition that popped up. See what you started? <laughs> <laughs> See, and they also kind of connect. Look, when you look up gateway ancestors, WikiTree is the third link. For Magna Carta, I love that. So I guess we'll all have to. Yeah, a oh, gateway to England. That's funny, Karen. <laughs> you go back to the Normans. Wait, let's go back to the Angles. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's go back to the. Uh, yeah. And if you go back to the gateway ancestors of Ireland, you're going to go back to people who were from the Middle East, according to the very bleeding edge of DNA technology. Yeah, I did send Yoke an email that her photo was photo of the week. I tried to, I've been doing that to make sure that they know. Charles, so, I think he, Charles says that his definition, and since he's the one who brought it up, can be anyone in the 15th century, but I actually think it's a gateway ancestor is anyone who opened the first gate for your family line in a new place. There you go. Uh, open that gate. Does that help? <clears throat> and then Donald also has, do you only have one gateway ancestor or one for each line? <laughs> Good question, Donald. Were we talking about you? photos? <laughs> yes. Sorry. Well, let's, uh, let's go back. I mean, I think it's, I like talking about other stuff too, but I also like talking about photos. So while you guys figure out what a gateway ancestor is, <laughs> we'll keep looking at photos. <laughs> So I did like this photo though. I like their hats. And the wind, the March breeze. What what's the thing? March breezes bring wait. April March showers bring eight no, April flowers. May May winds bring March flowers. March showers that bring April flowers. Whew. What are you going on about? Yeah, my <laughs> grandmother used to say it. It was a it's a oh. it was a, a rhyme thing. I've heard of it. So the March winds are blowing their skirts. I'm looking at the photo. It's actually oh. connected, really. <laughs> so th I said, this says they are on the land that Phoebe made the Oklahoma 1930, 1893 land run to acquire. Wow. Oklahoma. That's pretty cool. Yes. Okay, let's go. 
Okay. Look at this one. That's pretty cute. Look at him. He looks like he's having a grand old time. <laughs> Does he have? No. I thought maybe he was holding he's got a, a, tall, a tall glass in his hand. Is it that? Let's use my zoom abilities. Yes. Zoom. I, don't, I think he's just adjusting himself. I don't think he's holding anything. I think that's his tie. That's there. They're, but they're out in the woods, kind of like I am. I live in the woods, pretty much. I want to go oh. and be in the woods. <laughs> Who is it? Original oil painting. I like that. It's very pretty. Mm hmm Oh, <gasps> it's a cow. People oh, in the chat are making up rhymes. Like they're being silly. July hornets bring August frogs. Really? <laughs> My grandmother's looking down on you people. Right My now. mom just put the whole quote, I think, there for you. Thank you, Joe. I like this cow one. Yoke, your photos have been great. The last one, this one, I like this one. It's my cow. I have a cow. Look at my cow. Oh, nice. Fun. Family picnic. Come on, Zoom, man. There you go. Ooh, somebody's mm. getting the evil eye. Who's getting the evil eye? This guy, maybe this guy over here? He That's is. Crazy. I wish my pointer worked. I wish I had a pointer. That ability. is such a good picture. And oh my goodness. Very expressive. <laughs> I wonder what he did. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's because he sat by a lady he wasn't supposed to. But if it's family. She looks, she looks like she's in deep thought. Maybe or she's bored. staring at her and <laughs> not him. Oh, look at that. That is just so fun. That's awesome. That's a great picture. Everybody's kind of doing something different. I like I like these two though. That's a great interaction. <laughs> That's a great picture. That's like a. a oh, it has all the photos of everybody in the back. I think that, yeah, it's the same. Yeah. That's great. The hey, Billy should probably tag everybody who's in that photo. Nudge, nudge. <laughs> oh, look, lunchtime on the farm. Guys, if you put photos of animals, I'll just be in love. So just keep that in mind. Look at the baby lambs. Baby goats. That's so cute. And the baby feeding the baby. Looks like they're drink they're doing it from beer bottles. Yeah, that that's kind of what it looks like. But it has a little nipple on oh, it. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah. Just they probably just filled up the yeah. I have a friend who has a goat farm and they have to take the babies into the house and love on them so that they'll be humanized. If not, they're really mean. They have to they have to take them in and, and, and acclimate them to humans. Look at this. She's just obviously not really at the beach. It's like a background. I feel like it's a photography pose. studio. No, I don't think it's real. No. <laughs> you don't think those are the real waves crashing in the background? If, if they are, she's getting ready to get really wet. <clears throat> You sisters on Easter Sunday. With their Easter bonnets. Mm-hmm. She they have cute dresses. Why are they all leaning? Or is that the way the picture is? I think I think, that's, I think that's that's the, the picture. picture. It's like that's a Wizard of Oz house. <laughs> oh no, they're still leaning. Oh wait, the picture, yeah. <clears throat> well, here's another cool pic picnic you one. She's like, no, no, no. There's a bottle of wine over. Is that a motor? Oh, I don't know what that is back there. Mm -hmm. They're just flying and having a good time. Nice. Oh, got some. Is that a. Puppies. Puppies. Roof, 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 roof. 
Everybody's dogs are going to start barking now. <laughs> I like this one. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, that, that one's hilarious. It says spring. The name of it is spring training. Training this little girl. That is cute. I wonder if she grew up to be an acrobat or something. That's Scott, cute. please tell us. What is she training for? Is she a famous acrobatic now? Oh, look at that one. That's cute. Somebody on their commencement. Yeah, all the commencements are on in the spring. Mm-hmm. Chickens, baby chicks. Happen in the spring? That does happen March 16th. This just happened. Just had some baby chicks. Springtime in the 60s. <clears throat> what are they holding? Eggs? Candy? Bunnies. Bunnies. Bunnies? Easter time. I remember that suit. My brother had that suit. In South Carolina. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, Myrtle Beach, yeah. <laughs> he never wore that hat, though. Oh, too cool for that hat? Yeah. Oh, Betsy. Is Betsy still here? I saw her earlier. It's Betsy. That's a great Not picture. <laughs> Cute. She said that was probably the last time she ever wore gloves. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't move to Canada. I wear gloves every day. I love that picture. Yeah, this was a pretty, I like that photo too. <laughs> I want to frame that picture and hang it in my house. Oh, look, what's that say underneath? I know it. When someone, okay, I can't see it. It's not Which good. one? So I love it when someone has a sense to identify who's in the photo now. If we can find out who is who. I have some, I think he's figured out some, but he's not sure. Well, I was thinking that maybe he had made a comment about yeah. why she was staring him down. No, they didn't. That one. A lot of comments going on. Oh, look at the baby goats. I've got the baby cow. Oh, we didn't. Oh, look at this. She's pretty cute. Look we at didn't her. see her before. She's just doing laundry. She's a laundry girl. What a cutie. Look <laughs> at the pantaloons she's wearing. Uh huh. That's 1931, I want to say. Um, Judging by the hair. Mm, doesn't say. That's what my mother would be wearing. I've got a really cute picture of my mother I should put up sometime. We didn't see this one either. Wow. Is that a tr what is that? I don't know. I guess I have to use my oops. I have to use my zoom capabilities. I guess it's like a bush. Or oh it's a tree. Oh they cut the picture. Gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. I could tell that much. What a great family. Says 1934 Delaware Park Greenhouse. Nice. Very cool. By Mark. The same, he also answered the question of the week. Mark Weinheimer. Oh, here's this one. The chilling trip into nature. Oh, that's a motorcycle on the left. I didn't realize that I was thought a that was a motorcycle, but it's covered and up with all the kind of and everything. Yeah. I wasn't sure. And it was some kind look horsies. Yeah, I was getting ready to say she's gonna say horsies. <laughs> Sarah loves the horsies. Nice. Another look, another one. Man, you guys are spoiling. That's me. a draft horse, though. Are there two of them there? There's two of them there. Uh, maybe not be a draft horse. There's lots of draft horses here, like the Clydesdale type horses. Here mm -hmm. in our area. Oh, oh so it says uh, getting ready for the yes yeah, spring triathlon. <laughs> the and wheelbarrow. And okay. the wedding. You ever go to those? You went to things when you were a kid where you had to do the wheelbarrow run where your sibling held your leg. Mm -hmm. you or when they tied your, where you had to be the three. Yeah. Yes. Man, the the three-legged man. 
all the baby chicks. And then Betsy. Oh, I didn't see this one. No. Oh, and that was it. That Thank was you, it. everybody. Great Appreciate pictures. Beautiful yeah, photos. Really of the wonderful. Movie. So now, do we? So not right now. We right are. Now. Right, right now, as we're speaking, I'm sure people are working away on the Wiki Tree Challenge for War Rob's week. Yes, they certainly Mag are. Mag's good, Mag's good friend, Rob. Rob. Mag's just friends with everybody. She just knows everybody. In the... <laughs> so how how's it going, Mindy? How are we doing so far? Actually going really well. People have been staying busy and they're finding all kinds of cool surprises for them. Mm -hmm. Uh, so have have we broken any brick walls? I know that yes, we very oh, definitely we look, have. We have. We have. Yes, we have. He was, he was unsure if we would actually break some brick walls, but we have. Oh, oh he he's going to be excited on Wednesday. Mm. I don't know if we'll make him cry, Megs, but You've he'll be excited. <laughs> we'll have to. We'll try really hard. <laughs> So for those of you who do not know, the Wiki Tree Challenge is our year-long event where each week we take on a different genealogy guest star and make their tree more accurate and complete than it is anywhere else. So right now we're working on Rob. And for those of you, Rob, Rob Worthen. Rob Worthen. DNA Jedcom, DNA Adoption, and he's also the co-founder and vice president of MidaYDNA.org. Plus he does lots of DNA stuff. He's a DNA person. He his wife's story about her adoption and how he created all these crazy cool genetic genealogy tools to figure out that adoption is one of the biggest influences on how we do adoption research today and the tools that we have in genetic genealogy today are based on what rob did with his wife it's crazy mm -hmm. sue i have to mention sue, sue. she's irish Oh, Ella, and we found all kinds of things. We have anything from fun little interesting facts to tragedy. There's always tragedy up in somebody's branches. Oh no! So, and for everybody, we have our spring cleanathon coming up, and starting April 23rd to April 26th. So, if you want another challenge on top of a challenge. Well, this week we won't actually have a guest star, so it'll right. be a free week. But this will, it just kind of coats, you know, it's just a topping cherry on top for the year of accuracy because we're cleaning the tree, going through all of the data doctor suggestions, fixing dates, locations, cleaning up biographies. So if you want to get on, on that, you can register here on this thread it's pinned to the top of g2g you can and also join the april team for the wiki tree challenge as well and there's already 307 answers for that, that. so i think people are a little bit excited just 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 ted <laughs> so come on i'm captaining a team i think mindy's captaining a team mm -hmm. mags have you registered yet i'm doing it right this second <laughs> Because Max is on my team, so she, you know, she has to. <laughs> I have Team Virginia. Cornbread catchers here. Because, you know, we're the South. Cornbread. Get it. No, just kidding. So, the Cleanathon. Come join us. I've officially we'll registered now. I've signed up. So I think the best part about these thons, or maybe the worst part, no, I'm just kidding. It's very have... thons. <laughs> we, we have a live cast every four hours just to keep you updated. And you get the... to see us all tired and silly. And... Yes. 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 I mean, you probably, if you have witnessed before, I've been on here at 4 a.m. midnight. Alash, Alash has taken care of the yes. overnights now. For, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, That's before good. I was when I was working at the hotel, I was awake anyway, and she would pop in. So, <laughs> but now I'll probably be asleep, and Alesh can take those. But it'll be fun. We have prizes. We give away T-shirts, and it'll be a great time. 
Yeah, Pip says those live casts during the thons are great because they just get, if you think Saturdays get out of hand, those ones even get more out of hand. Talk about punch drunk. Yes. <laughs> yes. At the end, I mean, even though we're only on, we're only, we're on every four hours, but you still have to, you have to be on every four hours. You know what I mean? It's like, it's mm -hmm. a lot of work. And we used to do every two hours. And every three hours, yeah. Yeah, we did every two or three hours. And there were, it was only Aon and me and Julie, I think. And we did them every, every single one, 24 hours for the 72 hours. It was crazy. Yeah, but now we have different people. So some of us can get some sleep. And we and do it every Abby, Abby was our computer. Abby did all the tabulation and statistics stuff in the background. Now we have all that automated Thanks, a lot, Alesh. Thanks, automated Alesh. Yes, a lot <laughs> Alesh. <laughs> so yeah, that is that's coming up. It's gonna be here it's a month away now, pretty much. Today's the twentieth, that's the twenty third of April. It'll be a good time. So unless anybody has any questions or comments, we will probably go. And we will see you all Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern EDT because we're on daylight savings time now. So just keep that in mind. 8 p.m. And we'll be revealing what we found for Rob's week. And also we'll be kicking off Dallin, right? Dallin Quas. Right, Mindy? Yes. Dallin Quas. Quas? Quas? Did I say that right? <laughs> And then, yeah, it'll be a great time. So we will see you then. Bye, everyone. Wiki